Hello knockouts, Tanya TKO here. And I am um, making this video, and I can't say that this is gonna be a quick video because my mind is like really all over the place. I um oh and it's like you know what I pulled over into like an empty street so that I could like get some peace and quiet. Right now I'm in Los Angeles and then now I'm on this empty street and all these trucks and stuff started passing by as soon as I turned on the camera. So let's see if we can get through this. I can't say that this is gonna be a short video because my mind is all over the place. I was driving and I felt this extreme amount of sadness come over me. And the sadness came over me because I was, I was, I decided to, my car just got here. I had my car shipped from New York out here. It just got here about a day or so ago. And this is my first time driving around in my car. So it's like, it's such a weird, it's such a weird feeling. But, cause you know, the car feels like home and then the city is just this big city full of stuff that I, I just don't know. But the sadness came over me because of this thought that entered my mind or this feeling because I was like driving around and I saw because you know I was here in Los Angeles for the first time really two years ago when I did that expo up at the convention center with my dad and the people who came out to volunteer etc and um, and that's what this video is about it's not really about my father it's about this feeling that I had this feeling of just sadness and I, you know, I haven't really been making videos very much lately since I left New York. And this is a video that I did not want to make. And then, well, first I wanted to make it, then I didn't want to make it. And then this feeling of sadness came over me. So I was like, let me go ahead and make the video. The video was about dating and love and falling out of love and falling in love and you know how people say that when we date we're really dating ourselves and I've even said that myself because I know that the people that we date are a reflection of us but I think it goes so much deeper than that so let me get back to the because this this video let me just say this I had had this idea to make this video about mm, two weeks ago and I was really caught up in that emotion and I was like talking to my friends about it and then after I talked to my friends about it I got it off my chest and I was like okay so because I really wanted to make the video then so that other people could benefit from it I feel like I've been talking forever and haven't said anything how long have I been speaking oh lord three minutes okay let's go let's go let's go so I wanted to make the video then and I didn't because I'd spoken about it and I got it off my heart and chest and then after that I didn't want to make the video anymore because I was like oh I don't want to put my personal business out there blah 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 and then I was just driving around it's a lazy Sunday morning and uh, I was a Sunday afternoon now and I was just like looking around the city and looking at the buildings and I'm sure some of these streets are the streets that I passed down when I was with my father and this feeling of sadness came over me and the reason why the feeling of sadness came over me is because wow I feel like emotional I feel like like I'm at 70% like at any moment I could just like my eyes can start to water but I'm gonna try to hold it together the reason I felt emotional because the time was so beautiful you know as a middle child and as a child who's traveled a lot I and then also you know my mother passing away has had a tremendous impact on me as well because you never really know when someone is going to go and it it gives you this interesting feeling of separation you know like you have to separate yourself because that 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 rip that I felt when my mother passed away is a heart ripping feeling that I wouldn't want to wish on anyone and so to not ever feel that feeling again you have to kind of keep yourself separate so nonetheless, and that's actually, it's affected my friendships, it's affected the way I navigated my family, the way I travel, the way I really feel like a nomad <laughs> or a nomada, however you want to put it. But I feel like a nomad, you know, and that I can just get up and go without really looking back or giving another thought to anyone but myself. So nonetheless, I was on this trip with my dad and it was so beautiful. And it was beautiful because as a middle child, I haven't really spent much one-on-one -on -one time with my father, you know, without any interruptions, you know, especially as our parents grow and, you know, they, our parents are working all the time. And then when we grow, we're working all the time. And then as our parents grow older, 
you know, um, the, the dynamic shifts into that now, you know, now my father's retired, but then now I'm working. So we had the opportunity to come out here for work. And, um, <clears throat> and so, you know, we did the expo and, you know, my dad, he plays Chef Chippy and he cooks up the treats and the smell from the treats brings people over to the table. Cause you know, we had the naked banner and we had the treats and we had all this stuff. And so we were out here and we were driving around and this was the first real time that I'd had as an adult. I can say maybe as an adult, I can't think of another time. Like when I graduated from college, my father was there. He was there with my sister and, um, and we didn't really get that one-on-one -on -one time, you know, especially like when you have siblings, you know what I'm saying. But that's not even what this video is about. <sighs> but, I mean, you bear with me. I know. Uh, bear with me, please. Because I want to talk about love and relationships. But I wanted to talk about what prompted this. But nonetheless, because that's kind of like, it's, it's not even relevant. It is relevant, I think, maybe. But nonetheless, so I was out here with my dad and it was beautiful because... We had had a chance to really spend some time together and um, and I don't want to say get to know one another better, but really interact and see a new side and interact with new sides of a person or develop and explore other sides of a person. And it was just, it was beautiful. And I, as I was driving, I felt like, I felt like I, I, wanted, I wanted to cry. And I felt like I wanted to cry because the time that I had with my father here was so amazing and it was just, it was just such a beautiful experience and what made it so beautiful was that, you know, we were here and we were living and it was good times and we were, we got trapped out here from Hurricane Sandy and so you know we had to spend extra time here and there was extra bonding and stuff and that was something that existed in that moment and as I was driving I was like you know I really I wish I wish that there was a way that I could take that moment and like make it a sweater and just wrap myself in that moment forever because you know as much as we may try and as much as we may hope because you know the people you know they look at me and they and they may have seen some videos with my dad and me and they see us at the expos and they think that everything is great and I think that there's a I think there's a desire in each one of us and this is what this video is about I think that there's a desire in each one of us to return to love, you know, and I think that like the loving times, they feel so good. And I think that each one of us, I think that, how do I put this? I feel like we're all on a voyage, you know, like we're, we're on this voyage, this return to love voyage there's a pigeon walking right outside my window right here <laughs> it's like pecking around it's distracting me because i see it in the corner of my eye <laughs> but nonetheless i feel like we're i feel like we're each on this voyage to return to love and i think that there are different things that come in and out of our lives like real life god let me tell you real life is is, is that the same see look thing is doing it's like going around in circles I keep my keep my eye on you all because this bird is like it's always something so nonetheless I feel like can you see me am I in the shot because um, this big steering wheel is in the way like, okay let's how about like that okay <clears throat> I feel like there's this this internal navigation inside each of us to want to return to love there was like this you know like the old like tv shows and films from back in the 80s and they would like go on like these explorations and it, there was like gulliver and um even gilligan's island and then there was like the one where they were traveling through the person inside their body and you saw them like traveling past the synapse in their brains and it was like there there are always these these movies about this journey 
and in this journey the people are trying to get back to something and I feel like in our lives there's this desire to get back to love get back to this loving feeling and and I think that's part of what keeps us in abusive relationships what keeps us forgiving people what keeps us hoping and holding on because as human beings we are naturally predisposed to love if you think about it you know I talked a little bit about me being a middle child etc and you know how with children you know you can punish a child you can spank a child discipline a child scream at a child do any number those of you who have interacted with children you know and after the child is upset that child finds a way to return to love and it's like they they come back to you and they they're open and they're loving and they've completely wiped their minds of the things that transpired your transgressions the things that you've done to to fault not fault them but the things that you've done to blank them whatever I can't think of the word but I want to move forward and their 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 natural predisposition and it's like all of us started out that way and I think that do you know what adrenal fatigue is and like do you know what like like the pre-diabetic state where you build up insulin resistance and it's like I think throughout our lives I think that we experience a sort of emotional fatigue where we have been so used to being let down that we have been so stretched to the max and then brought back in and stretched to the max and brought back in that's the way it is with like insulin resistance when you continue to eat these sweet foods and then the insulin spikes and then you it goes back down and then you you eat these sweet foods and then it spikes again and then after a while you're resistant to the insulin spikes and you just and then that's when you get into your pre-diabetic state and the same with like adrenal fatigue so it's like you're stretched to the max and then brought back in and then stretched to the max and then soon your, your elasticity is loose and rubbery and you can't really bounce back in like you used to and I feel like us as adults that we're suffering with so much let down I can't think of the word because my mind is like because what I really want to say What I really want to say is that, you know, throughout our lives, it just seems like so many people hurt us. And it seems like the only real way to, the only real way to have any semblance of a happy life is to have a short memory. Short memory and long forgiveness. Because without that, without that, it's such a, miserable miserable existence it's miserable without that and so it's like you know in our internal effort to navigate back to love we forget some of the transgressions formed upon us or acted against us we forget these things and we continue to move forward and it's like those of you and listen let me tell you something nobody's parents out there are perfect nobody's life is perfect we are not perfect and so if you want to have any type of relationship with your parents at all it's like you either forgive the atrocities or you live in limbo purgatory in this sort of hellish existence where you can't find forgiveness and then you know it's like and I realize, I realize that, you know how they say forgiveness is for you, right? I wonder what is the alternative because, you know, it's like, what do we do really? Because you know what it's like, the reason why this, this came up for me is because those days here in California with my dad were such an, it was such an amazing time, but it's not always like that. And you know, so people, they look and they see him in my videos and they perhaps hear me talk about him and, and they're like, oh wow, your dad must be amazing. And my dad is amazing in his own right, but my dad is not perfect and my life was not perfect. And there were things that, there were things that 
happened in our relationship which are are hard you know difficult but you know it's like so people see me and they're like oh well things must be great right and they see me and they think that oh, the situation must be amazing that my oh we have such a great oh I wish I had a father like yours and all this that and the other and I'm like you know, and I truly believe that each one of us came into this life to work on something. And I believe that our parents, that we chose our parents, and we chose our parents for particular reasons. And there are things that I have benefited from as a human being on the good side and also the things that are perceived as not so good that has strengthened me and has created me into the person that I am today. So yes, I'm, I'm grateful for those experiences. So I wanna ask you, honestly, what is the alternative? What is the alternative? Because like I said, you know, people see me and they're like, oh, I wish I had a father like yours. And they, they, they're they enamored by the interaction and they're enamored by the love. But you know, this love exists here. This relationship exists here as a choice. Honestly, as a choice. I made the choice to, to forgive my father. For a lot of different things you know like I said this life ain't perfect I made a choice to forgive my father because for me for me it is it's just it's a more pungent it's a more happy it's a more fulfilling existence living in love you know and I think that we have to I think that we have to honor ourselves first and foremost. You know, we talk about, we, I, we talk, we talk about forgiveness and I talked in this video about how forgiveness is for you and not the other person. And what I mean by that is not that you betray yourself because the very first person that you have to take care of is yourself. I'm not asking you to stay in any type of abusive relationship, sacrificing yourself for somebody else's happiness while you're miserable, miserable. Somebody else is able to to live lax. That's not what I'm saying at all. I think that we have to kind of categorize people. I think we have to know our limits and know the full extent and the full breadth of what it is that you're able to do in this interaction with this person. Like with my dad, I know that there are certain things that I can count on my father for and I know that there are some things that I cannot. And I know that there are some ways that I can interact with my father that can become a very negative experience filled with vitriol and sometimes violence and so I know that given what it is that I want in this life for myself right that <clears throat> that I choose I choose to participate in the interactions that are going to help me live the type of life that I want to live. And I want to live a life that has peace in it. And I want to live a life that has enjoyable times. And I'm going to say this. I'm going to say this. And it takes a lot of forgiveness and a short memory. Short memory. Hmm and long forgiveness it does it does you know um yeah that's it that's it it does it does you know and it's like because i remember you know i have because you know i have subscribers who who um who write to me and and they talk to me and i do coaching sessions and there was this one particular subscriber who was telling me about how her mother is like violent and calls her a B, the B word and stuff like that. And she was just talking about how she couldn't stand her mother. And then she moved out of her mother's house. And then I saw her posting up on Facebook about how much she misses her mommy. And I was like, oh my God, that relationship was such a mess. You know, such a mess. And yet here she is missing her mother. 
And I think it's because, you know, nobody is 100% bad. You know, I, I, people have their moments and they have their good moments and they have their not so great moments. And I think that you as a human being, I think that you have to, number one, first and foremost, honor yourself and make sure that the interactions that you're having with people are nourishing and fulfilling to you first and foremost and that the relationship is on your terms and that the things that are not on your terms that you have to find a way to do without those things you have to find a way to alter those things and not participate in the things that are not on your term things that are depleting to you things that are that are, are draining to you, that are abusive to you. You have to find a way to be honored in that relationship in the way that you choose to be honored. So, how, listen, Thank goodness, thank goodness I don't, I don't come from an environment where, you know, my father would call me out my name and call me the B word and all this other stuff. But that's my, that's, listen, that is my, that's my, how do I put this? That's my assignment in life or that wasn't my, my particular plot or lot in this life. You know, my issues are not going to be your issues and your issues are not going to be somebody else's and whatever your your lot in this life is. You know, you have to see and kind of interact with yourself and see what it is that, that you desire as a human being. If you don't want to be spoken to in a certain way, have a conversation about that. If you don't like the... The, the violence or a certain type of interaction or belittlement or abuse in some sort of way in an interaction, you know, you have to have a conversation about that and, and ask this person to honor the way it is that you feel and the way what your preference is. And if this person does not honor, you have to limit your contact with them to the interactions in which you can be honored in a particular type of way. Even if that means that you have a telephone relationship with this person, you only see this person on holidays or whatnot. It really depends or whether or not when you see this person start to get agitated or start to whatever, then that's when you're like, okay, well, I need to, I need to leave the house. Like this relationship serves me up until the point where you begin to scream. And then at that point I have to keep, I have to keep it moving. And you, listen, I would love your, your input on this because it's tricky. It's tricky and I want to get out of here because I, um, I feel like I've made my whole point and I wanted to talk about love and relationships in this video but I never got a chance to get to that. I wanted to talk about not just the returning to love with your parents but actually in relationships searching for yourself in another person, searching for that best you. So come look for my next video. I'm going to post that in about two days. And, um, and, and then we'll discuss, we'll discuss that. But I want to hear from you in this video. How do you, how, what, how have you found the ways to interact with your parents, your family members, etc.? You know, and then this is a caveat because you know what? You cannot choose your parents. You can't choose your relatives. You can choose how much you interact with that person, how you interact with them, and in what capacity. Your romantic partners, you do choose. And I know, and, I, and listen, I know, I know, I know, I know that even with the most vile, most violent partner out there, that there are great times in that relationship. I know. I know that nobody is 100% bad. I know that only a small portion of the time this person is acting out in a way that you don't want to, to deal with. But you have to ask yourself, you know, you have to weigh it and ask yourself, okay, so this person is a great person and we have some really good times. How does that the intensity of that. How does that compare to the really bad times? Because you can have a person who is amazing and charming and taking you out dancing and twirling and all this other stuff 90% of the time. But if during the 10%, the minority of it, this person has broken your ribs or 
bashed in your face or cheated on you or brought you an STD, are the good times worth, there's a person out there, are the good times worth or equivalent, is the intensity of the good times equivalent to the intensity of those really bad times? First and foremost, you have to choose you. You have to choose you first and foremost. And in the relationship that I have with my father, you know, I am happy and feel really blessed for the good times. I am and I do. And the times that are not so great, and you know, and I've spoken with my father about the things that I, that I don't like. And, you know, my father is, he's set in his ways and he is old school, you know. And I've, I've spoken with him. And, you know, when, we, when, when people get up in their ways, it's like you have to make the choice. You know, I could choose to have no father in my life or... I could, uh, I mean, listen, I could choose to hold on and, and harbor the ill feelings and the resentment. How does that serve me as a human being when I can choose the interactions that I have and not participate in the interactions that I do not want, you know? Not participate in those. And that's what I choose to do. So any great relationship that you see me having with my father, with whomever, are, is the great relationship that I choose to have. And listen, I want, I want your feedback. What is it that you do to, um, what is it that you do to have an ongoing relationship with your family members, you know? Like I said, we don't choose our family. I want you to make different choices when it comes to the people that you do choose. I want you to know that the world is filled with so many different people out there. And you can choose yourself first and, and, and tweak your vibration and attract somebody energetically to you who is, who is going to vibrate at the level in which you're vibrating right now. You know, I only got one father. And I, I wonder if there's a way to find mentors that can be a sort of parental figure to you. And, you know, it's like sometimes you have to be really careful with that as well. Because, I mean, look at this whole Bill Cosby thing. And I want to do a video totally about that. But tell me, what do you do? Tell me, please, because I've told you what I've done. Listen, short memory and long forgiveness and just interact in the ways that I choose to and leave when the interaction begins to turn into something that I choose not to experience, you know? And there are, there are things that I can do to make sure that my dad and I don't argue or enter into altercations. There are things that I can do to make sure that, that we don't have those type of interactions. And I go and I spend time with people whom I don't have to behave in such a way to not have altercations. Do you know what I mean? So tell me, tell me, what do you do? What do you do? I, I'm interested in your answer. So listen, I love you very much. This video turned out to be longer than I expected it to be. Um, but I'm happy that I got that off my chest. Remember, look for the next video in about two days. I want to talk with you about falling out of love and what it is exactly that we fall out of love with and how it really may not be the other person. It may be us. So I want to talk with you about that. Okay, so hug me, hug me, hug me. Hug, 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 hug. Love, 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 love. Love you all so very much. So listen, go out there and love one another, but most importantly, what? That's right. Love yourself. Come over to my website, tanyatko.com. Make sure you download my free guide on how to truly love yourself and heal old trauma. When you download that guide, you'll be entered automatically into my mailing list and you'll be able to get updates from me and know what's going on with me out here and the things. I have such great news. You know, I got, um, I got accepted to YouTube space out here. So I have some sound stages. So my, the talk show dream is about to come true. So listen, 
I'm about to get out of here. I love you so very much. Remember, answer the question below. And remember, look for, why is my car shaking? I'm gonna have to go get this thing tuned up or something. Listen, so um, I love you. Let's talk soon, okay? Honey TKO, I'm out. Peace. Hmm.